Alright, uh, welcome back to Movie Nights. We are continuing the Thunder in Paradise saga. Trilogy. Trilogy. I guess saga the would be if they... The trilogy. <laughs> if they had maybe finished the in the fourth uh, movie, then maybe it would have been a saga. Yeah, this is the incomplete story of Thunder in Paradise. <laughs> it's told by three movies. <laughs> it seems like they were just doing all of their two-parters, but they didn't bother with the last one because these didn't do well. Because it lost popularity, and probably the show got close to cancellation, and they're just like, yeah, it's really good. Did, did they release the movies um, before the show was done? I don't know. I um, thought it was after, like, they were just trying to cash in on the show after it was cancelled. In that case, it's probably just the movies didn't do as well as they felt you know, necessary to bother <laughs> redoing the last ones. I can't imagine that they didn't do well. I mean, they were so <laughs> good. This was the most boring of the three of them. They really picked a terrible two-parter to do. Like, it's so slow and clunky. It would have been better, really, if they had just done the last two-parter of the series, which is, you know, the series finale. I'm sure that's more interesting than this. <laughs> we, we don't know, but you, know, you never know, maybe. I mean, I guess it might be a closing out of the series. Maybe they all die by the end of it. <laughs> maybe Hogan just leg drops everyone and then leaves the island and it explodes. He goes, I'm the show world champion! <laughs> Hurricane Hogan, brother! Hogan and his buddy Iron Brew are hired by the government to take out... To the listen to Jimmy Hart. To listen to... Oh yeah, they do. They start with Jimmy Hart and the Tone Deafs? Is that what they were called? And, and Tone Deaf. And it's Tone just Deaf. one guy. Okay, which I guess was Brutus. <laughs> no, figure out who wasn't. Tone Deaf was. There's, there's just another musician beside him. Oh well why does he get called Tone Deaf? <laughs> why does he want to be part of the group where he's Tone Deaf? I don't know. But they were saying about how, um... The girls really turned me on! <laughs> the girls really turned me on! Brutus, Brutus jumps, jumps in and goes, Hogan really turns me on! Get out of here, Brutus. <laughs> Hogan in the background. <laughs> Stay away from my Hulkamaniacs, brother. I can't believe this. Hulk Hogan and Iron Brew are hired by the NSA to take out a drug lord. And they can't pay. <laughs> they, they're like, we can't afford the fee, It'll but we pay can pay the expenses, expenses, like, you know, whatever expenses there, but not the fee. So apparently the government can't afford, like, five grand. They said it was five grand they had to five pay? Five grand a day, and it only apparently. takes them a day, so yeah. it would have been five grand. I don't know, South America is maybe two and a half hours by hyperspeed from, you know, wherever <laughs> they are. Where, of course, you find your fake Del Castro. Yeah, for some reason he's like Fidel Castro. And he's played by the guy who plays Brew. Chris Lemon. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I decided it's racist. I, he didn't agree, but I think it's racist. <laughs> we go play a little slap and tickle, huh? <laughs> Underneath. I think it, it's a insulting caricature or something. Like, I don't know. It's, it's an ill-thought-out idea. I mean, even before we could tell that it was the actor playing dual roles, we could tell it was a really, really fakey beard. So It's like fun for, again, it's like what they used for um, Giant Gonzalez in his episode. <laughs> Except in this one, you you know the reason they're doing the fake beard is because it's going to lead to a, a switch situation, a switcheroonie. But they, they just play it out so, like, you can see it coming a mile away, and this is like... And then it doesn't till like, the last quarter. <laughs> yeah, so it's like an hour and a half ahead of time. You know it's going to happen, you're waiting for it, but then it's just this long build-up, and they act like it's a surprise at the end, when it's not in the slightest, because you could tell it was just some white guy doing, like, Oh, this accent, eh? <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, Gringo, I do not have a very good leg. Ay caramba, all these gringos, hey? <laughs> and and you can't call Hogan a gringo, he's orange. El orange, hey? <laughs> And then the hot sauce, help with this mission. <laughs> Shut up, Island Woman, you're not in this one. <laughs> we'll put you in the video game. Where have you been hiding? We've been looking all over for you. Come on, you're a hero now. And there's lots of people that want to meet you. 
I assume Hogan like dropped her so she wouldn't steal his thunder. <laughs> In, In paradise! Brutus, I wouldn't steal your thunder, sir! <laughs> Get her back, brother! He had a line in this one, but I couldn't tell what he said. He said, I love you, Hogan. <laughs> hey, Hurricane, how you doing, man? Yo, Jimmy Jams. I love you, Hogan. <laughs> so they go on this mission to South America, which is, of course, you know, a couple hours away. Hyperspeed. <laughs> and they, they go into stealth mode. Which is a blue farty cloud around the boat. Like, we couldn't determine what stealth mode's supposed to be because, like... Well, we're assuming it's supposed to block radars, satellites, or whatever. But, I mean, they use this, like, in the first episode, too. They're going to stealth mode, but they're still very visible as a ship going by people because they immediately stealth mode. And then they're driving by people. <laughs> it's like, that uh, doesn't cloak you yet. <laughs> we still see the fucking boat going by, you assholes. Yeah, so, I mean, regardless of whether they mean it's he's supposed to be like an invisibility cloak, or if it's supposed to be that they're just blocked off from radar. I know radar is part of it, because they do mention that in the first one. Mm -hmm. Blue fart cloud doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It wasn't even a good blue fart cloud, it was like a half-assed gradient kind of mm. going over, like, it was a really bad effect. They might as well share, like, with their stupid CG thing, just making the boat go invisible or something. They might as well give them a cloaking device. And... Yeah, they had the terrible CGI boat already, all they have to do is just take the boat out of the shot or something. Mm. They just... All they show is just, like, the, the waves behind it. Like, yeah. Where's these waves coming from? <laughs> Where's the sound of a boat coming from? <laughs> the waves really turn me on. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jimmy Hart in the sky playing the song because he's on the boat. <laughs> they just see him floating by. He appears in a rose. <laughs> Both had the same dream, brother. I gotta be the world champion. Do, 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 do. In my country, shared dreams are as common as the sunset. Yeah, his country of Texas. <laughs> What country do you think Brutus is from? <laughs> Hogan Stan. <laughs> I can't believe this! So they get to the island <laughs> and proceed to have a very long and boring trek through jungle. Mm -hmm. There's some flamingos, which this, were exciting. <laughs> this is the first time the background music's been a particular issue for me in one of these because for long periods, it's just this really droney, ambient thing, and they keep using this track over and over throughout this whole movie. Just do 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 do. So imagine that for an hour and a half. It, it kills it because it's it happens during a lot of parts where it should be building up tension, you know, getting you hyped like, oh man, they, they're coming in with guns, this is big, they're going to kidnap the kids or whatever else. Like, oh, they're going to get this drug lord. <gasps> no. Do, do. In his popcorn bag. How many times does he fart into a popcorn bag? <laughs> series? We really need to see the rest of the episodes. <laughs> Maybe there's an origin to the fart in a popcorn bag story. Mm -hmm. Fartomania, brother! <laughs> a fart for a fart, brother! <laughs> I think I'll call for pizza. Hey, where are you going? Wait a minute! Uh, no pepperonis. What can I say? So, the crime anyway. lord is hanging out in, I don't know, the Wayne's World basement somewhere? <laughs> and he's behind a waterfall? And he's hanging out with Shang Tsung, who is... Yeah, Shang Tsung is, is his number one guy. Number one guy. All that, no pay. How do you manage to find us these wonderful clients? We've got a chance to make things safer for kids like Jess. It's worth a free ride. Don't you think so? Don't mind me, I just like to gripe. With you 100%, brother. Apparently the government is not able to get this, this drug lord it's just but, a day trip, though, yeah, for them. But one guy can just Kool-Aid man through the door hmm. and then just punch them and <laughs> grab him, and then he's gone. Like, that's, it was that easy for him. But Brew helped by driving the ship. 
Well, from what I hear, Santiago's at home. Yeah. They take off in the water, and uh, Shang Tsung proceeds to do every single facial expression he can think of within the span of like 10 seconds. Is mine. <laughs> he is he's doing a lot of face. He's he doing the your soul's my face all over this. <laughs> He promises to call his little girl during the mission, so he picks the dumbest point possible when he's in a shootout. And goes, hey, just brother, and I don't break my promises. And then she's like, "Phone call, world champion." <laughs> and then Jess is like, "Well, what about that promise you made to Bret Hart to drop the title?" To <laughs> oh no, it's not in my league, brother. We're losing reception. <laughs> <laughs> I think you broke that promise, brother! Lag drop! <laughs> I'm right. the new drug lord! <laughs> we have to appoint him <laughs> South America's drug lord! He's the South American appointed government Well, drug lord. okay, but I've never used drugs before! Nope, you gotta leave now! <laughs> no, he's never done drugs, he's just put Cheeto dust all over himself. <laughs> Really blended him in. I noticed in this one he was a lot better at at, at the camo makeup. It looked a lot better in the There's other some one. Some extreme psychological warfare. I do like um, it surprises Shang Tsung at one point because he takes his mask off and he sees his psychological warfare. He's like, <gasps> they get the drug lord to jail and then they do a little wrap up at the end. Yeah, Part it, it one. makes it so clear like this one's the worst of all that this is just two episodes smashed together for a movie. Well, it's the most disjointed yeah, one. Cause because they're two different stories completely. Yeah, they just both happen to center around the same villains, mm -hmm. but there's, there's the get the guy and then there's the hostage situation. Mason Lee, he's taking over St. Martin's. He wants Santiago released from prison in exchange for Jess, Kelly, and the other kids. Damn! Which ties into the other plot, sort of. There is, first of all, there's a girl that um, is visiting from Kelly's old school or something, like that she's supposed to take care of her. And I guess Kelly's in charge oh, of her, and that's Allison. why he's, Allison, who's apparently me. So she is this uh, schoolgirl who wants to model, but Kelly's like, you can't do that. And Bray's just like, hey, if you just take off that stupid sweatshirt and those glasses and put your hair down, you're beautiful, stupid. Instant transformation, duh. <laughs> you can go be in, I think it's Miss Wine Tropics or something, I don't know. It's something that like, he just goes like, hey, she's hot. And they're like, you're right, put her in here. You're don't right. sign any she, contracts. She's the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Put her in there immediately. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no contract signed. There's no like... <laughs> Like, verbal agreement even about what's expected. She's just what taking the pictures. She doesn't expect to get paid. Yeah, I mean, and there's no, like, this could be like a nude magazine for all she knows. <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on there. They, they don't, do they even mention her full name? Maybe. I think maybe he goes like, this is Addison so-and-so, the hottest new star. Oh, you're right, she turned around, she's magnificent. Put her in <laughs> yeah. there. She certainly has an ass. They don't know if she can even model. All she does is spin once. Mm -hmm. And they're like, she's great at this. Whoa! She's incredible, bro. This ties into the plot where the little girl Jessica and Kelly are going to Kelly's old art school. I guess it's just a school it's that's having an art class. Yeah. yeah, they go into the, to the school, and then Kelly has a random backstory about how she had a friend who died that doesn't really play into much. I don't know, I fell asleep during that. Does anybody else know about this? So far, just us. Let's do it. Anyway, they go they, to They this make class. a perfect bust, though, of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> This amazing bust. And then they had a scene like in Ghost where like Hogan is sculpting himself. <laughs> and then Brutus comes up behind him. <laughs> You're saying how much better the actress who plays Jess is now. She is. She's a pretty good child actress. I mean like she's typical precocious child, but that's, you know. But if you can get a kid to kind of say these lines realistically, I say that's that's pretty good for the time. <laughs> mm. And not as obnoxiously as the first Jess. Mm. Is it her? Can you see? 
So, uh, yeah, they're at the school, and Kelly is teaching a class, and that's when Shang Tsung shows up with his goons. And he demands Jess be brought to him, and Kelly's all like, Oh, wait, she's not here! And then he points the gun at the Hulk Hogan bus, and Jess is like, No! I knew it! Seems like you love your father! Hope he loves you as much as you love him! <laughs> pretty graphic. <laughs> I'm amazed Hogan allowed that. <laughs> a smart boss should like repel the boy and then kill Shang Tsung and then Hulkamania runs wild throughout the school. I like the part where Shang Tsung is mad that they're talking so he shoots a bunch of books in retaliation. <laughs> Then no more talking! He's lucky he didn't shoot that book he's really interested in. Later. Yeah, Hop on Pop. Hop on Pop, yeah. <laughs> I've never found out how this ended. So in order to get uh, in there, they get the help of Allison, who apparently <laughs> used to go to the school, and she knew about a secret drain pipe that they could swim through from the ocean to get yeah. to Which the basement. Is all they need right there. She tells them there's a drain pipe that'll get them entrance, and they don't need to take her, but then they do. Yeah, well, they're like, uh, oh, thanks, we had a blueprint already, apparently. <laughs> yeah, they look at it on the computer, they got a fucking whole diagram of the whole building on there. My question is, why was there a drain pipe underneath the basement leading to the ocean? Was there a purpose here? For bad kids. <laughs> look! I went to that school for three years, and I know a secret way in. Underwater through a drain pipe. Let's go. So they get to the basement, and they realize that uh, the girl has left her breathing tank uh, on top. Because they, they brought her in, too. Another thing they really didn't need her for, because I think they know how to swim through a drain pipe without yeah. her. All she has to do is, it's right there. Look, Thanks. They know where it is. They have a map of it on their computer. She is not needed for any of this, but oh, come on along. You might see some hostages. You could get taken hostage. Anything could happen. <laughs> you can't be a model, but you can go into hostage situations. <laughs> <laughs> it's much safer for you than the modeling world. The modeling world's so seedy. <laughs> Too much smizing. Super smize better not hear you say that. <laughs> How dare you put me down? I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Oh, leg drop. <laughs> This is for life size, brother! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nanny was a better kid's fool! <laughs> Do you realize how hard it is to be me? It is not easy being the best at so many things. They should have teamed up those two, but the greatest. It'd be a great movie. Hopefully he's in Life Smize they, too. They'd turn heel together. <laughs> they'd be like, um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Darth Smize. Don't forget to smize. Are you smizing? No, you're not. Am I defeating you with the smize? The girl leaves her breathing tank on top of the trap door leading to this dream that's there for some reason. But this leads to the perfect opportunity for Hogan to get him. <laughs> he is out of here! Home run for Hogan! <laughs> Launches him into the sun? I mean, yeah. Guy hits the sun and then bounces back as his corpse lays on the ground for the rest of the episode. Yeah, he's found there. Like, at one point, the little girl finds him, and it's kind of like the reaction when you see a dead body mm -hmm. in a thing. Like, I guess he died from the fall. <laughs> it's really how Hogan solves a lot in this one is just nonsense. Nonsense, yeah. At one point, the uh, the children are all inside, they're locked inside a room, and it's it looks like a metal door. Yeah. Either way, it shouldn't, it's too thick for uh, anyone to normally Hogan, do like, that. Hogan, like, destroys kayfabe by punching through this supposedly metal door. Like, I'm not selling to this door. <laughs> and then he almost hits himself in the face as the door hits something off screen yeah. and kind of bounces back at him. That would have been a great take. <laughs> <laughs> he lag drops the door for good measure. <laughs> I'm the door! <laughs> He's standing there like a door. <laughs> Open me, brother, if you dare. <laughs> open the door to Hulkamania. Pastamania's doors will always be open. And all my Pastamaniacs 
are tearing their WCW shirts off, brother. I'm gonna give Big Bubba a dose of my Hulkaroos up there, and then I'm gonna body slam him again. So, and at one point, the little girl is stuck in an air duct, which has <laughs> turned on, and I don't know how air ducts, if they're normally that powerful, or they turned on something else, but it's like sucking her in. Yeah, there's like a fan or something right near her. Yeah, so he has to get her out by just punching through the air duct. <laughs> He's like, this is how he solves two things in this episode. They're like, dude, what should we do to come up with this? We've written ourselves in a corner. He's just gonna punch through it. <laughs> Like, just a can of sardines. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, the hostage situation is really when the movie gets so slow. Yeah, a lot of it's just them walking with that really droney track I mean, playing. Yeah, I mean, it seems to go on forever. And, and this episode really could have been just one part instead mm -hmm. of two. There's so much padding of stuff that you don't need to see. But all of this is leading to Brew having to be disguised as the drug lord. Hey, I get an idea. Since I play him anyway, why don't I dress as him? Okay, his beard was really fake anyway, so I guess he'll be perfect. They had a makeup crew somewhere that could help them with this. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, once he's dressed up as Fidel Castro, but he jumps right in front of Shang Tsung's face. He's like, ah, my friend. <laughs> okay, you dressed up like this guy, but if it was really a different person, you're not gonna look exactly like them. Maybe you're a passable match, but you're not gonna jump in someone's face so that they can clearly see the differences and be like, wait a second, there's something wrong here. He proceeds to immediately ruin this by um, Shang Tsung starts listening in on the radio to police frequencies to follow what they're doing. And then he's like, turn that off! I don't want to be reminded of these stinking police! <laughs> There's no reason why he should say that unless he knew that some idiot policeman was going to be on there like, Oh yeah, Santiago's still in prison! Supposedly this is Chang Sung's superior telling him to shut this off, but he continues to listen like, Huh? And then, suspicious yeah. for no reason. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not you! <laughs> And he proceeds to take out nunchucks <laughs> that he just happened to have on him. And then Shang Tsung yells, Cowabunga! <laughs> <laughs> Your Cowabunga is mine! Why did he have those on him? He had a gun. Like, why did he feel the need to bring nunchucks to? <laughs> Kelly also, uh, at one point, gets knocked out. Oh yeah, she knocks herself out, tripping on top of the, the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Hogan sees her laid out cold <laughs> on the floor, runs over a leg, drop. He goes, she'll be out for hours, and then runs out of the school and it explodes. And it shows her face in the explosion for a second, then Hogan comes and pushes hers out and it's his <laughs> face. She gets knocked out after she had escaped with Jessica. And then the guy finds her, I mean, granted she surprises him, and tries to knock him out with the fire extinguisher, and that's how she gets knocked out. But he just leaves her there. He doesn't capture her again, he doesn't shoot her, he just leaves her there. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't make any sense in a hostage situation, you would think. They run out as it's exploding, and they proceed to show it blowing up, like, ten different times <laughs> in a this row. This is the biggest school in the world. <laughs> Every time you think it's done, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So Shang Tsung gets taken out by Brew. Yeah, he wakes up and then decides this time he'll just kick his ass and then throw him in the drunk tank. Yeah, they have a they have a diving um, chamber that they apparently just use as their prison cell sometimes. Yeah. So if they they got a prisoner in there and they need to go out and dive, they're kind of screwed. Or they just shoot him into the ocean. <laughs> the jet <laughs> done. It turned out that blowing up the school was it it was for the better anyway. Yeah, the school because... needed funding because Hogan ran the funding out for the school. He used it all on pasta mania. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, it turns out that the insurance money paid for all that stuff we needed anyway. So hey. Uh... 
I'm, I'm glad their insurance cover's blown up by terrorists. <laughs> yeah, they do the second wrap-up, and then uh, he, Brutus steals his girl or something. Or his roll, we're not <laughs> sure. Yeah, maybe we think it's probably a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> Give me back my roll, brother! Thanks, Brutus! That's my girl! Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, boy, huh? And that's the ending of the, the saga. Mm -hmm. What a great saga this was. Brutus gets leg dropped off screen in the end. This was the least necessary of the series. I think if you want to watch them, watch the first two. As this movies, one's... yeah. Yeah, as movies. Um, if if you just want to see some funny Hulk Hogan stuff, I, I wouldn't really recommend this one unless you just, you're just a diehard fan. What I'd really recommend over the third movie is the CDI game. It's excellent. It was better than, the, than that movie. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't say it was good, I just said it was better. If you ever want Hulk Hogan and Chris Lemon berating you, <laughs> we'll play that game. Less drones, less incoming. Get it? Then get them! You got one shot, so make it count. Move! You're doing great, bro, but don't get cocky. No shooting, brother, but do it better! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they went to the same waterfall that fake Fidel Castro was hanging out at to shoot people in the face. Yeah, it was amazing. straight up murdering people. Yeah, I thought that's in South America somewhere. <laughs> well, they went to South America to go get the Kano guy. Uh, <laughs> just a hyper speed away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not recommended. <laughs> <laughs>